separate. It's a very, very small state, only 44 hectares. That makes about 110 acres. 350 inhabitants officially. It has its own government administration, the spiritual leaders, the Pope, the Vatican is spiritual center of 900 million of Catholics in the world. It has its own newspaper, the Roman Observer, the Vatican Radio that was built by Guglielmo Marconi, the inventor of the radio 100 years ago, presently broadcasting all over the world in different languages. The Vatican has also its own money, issuing only coins. Vatican coins, Vatican lira for special events, for collection, Vatican money, and also post office service, issued Vatican stamps. Right at the end of the street, in the front of us, the St. Peter's Square. We we'll cross uh, later, also after the visit of the museums. In the middle of the square, there is an Egyptian obelisk, one of the 13 Egyptian obelisks the are in Rome. Romans brought from Egypt 2,000 years ago Astrophis. The square is beautifully surrounded by the colonnade made by Bernini, 284 columns around four, row, four rows. And the St. Peter Church, St. Peter Basilica, the largest Christian basilica in the world. A church built in 120 years, between 1506 and 1626, built above the St. Peter's tomb. You know, that St. Peter was crucified here when this square, 1900 years ago, was a circus, the circus of Emperor Caligula. Under the Caligula and Nero persecutions, many of the other Christians were also here sacrificed. And even St. Peter was here crucified. And then buried on the Vatican Hill, where at the time there was a center. It's on the fourth century after Christ that Constantine, first Christian emperor, built a church above the St. Paul's tomb. Look here in the front to the right, uh, one of the entrance of the Vatican State at the, at the gate of the Swiss Guard, with the beautiful uniforms of the Swiss Guard. That's the Vatican Guard. They're called Swiss, uh, well, because they're Swiss. And this is a currency fund, if you form an army. At that time, forming armies, they were engaging mercenaries. Most of the mercenaries at the time were Swiss from Switzerland, and the tradition continues since there. The Vatican, since then, the Vatican is uh, pro engaging all these Swiss young men. So we're making our way to the Vatican Museum. It's a very long line here today. What is it? Well, we are in the uh, entrance to the Vatican Museum. There's a big circular walkway. You see, as I won't be able to tell you anything inside there, we'll make now a short stop here, and according to these pictures, I will tell you everything about the beautiful Sistine Chapel, about these fantastic paintings. First of all, why the chapel was called Sistine? Because the chapel was built uh, uh, under the Pope Sixtus IV. So by the name of the Pope Sixtus, called Sixteen. Built by the architect Giovannino de Dolci on the year 1475, that makes 500 years ago. You see, it was first a private chapel of the Popes, then this chapel became very famous because, as you know, it's inside the Sistine Chapel that Popes are elected. When the Pope needs to be elected, all the cardinals are closed inside, let's say, in conclave which means with key, because they cannot leave the chapel before the name of the Pope. They must stay inside there a day, a week, and it depends, as long as the name of the Pope. The chapel is inside entirely covered, faced by fresco paintings, by beautiful paintings made by great genius of the 15th and 16th century. So this is the Sistine Chapel. We'll enter into the chapel through this door here. So getting inside the chapel, looking by the right side, you see up by the wall, along the wall, six paintings you can see today here, representing the Old Testament life of Moses. And looking by the left side, by the wall, uh, uh, six more paintings representing the New Testament life of Jesus. Huh? As you can see, uh, same as in many churches and chapels, it's always represented the Old and the New Testament life of Moses, life of Jesus. They were painted by great genius of the Renaissance of the 15th century. You can see their names like uh, Gino, Pinturicchio, Botticelli, Rosselli, Ghirlandaio, Pellegrini, Cosimo, Signorelli. In the beginning, the ceiling of the chapel was painted in blue, like a sky with a few golden stars. It's on the, a few years later, on the year 1508, that the Pope 
the name was Julius II, he didn't like much as the city was painted and asked at all for sculpture. The name was Michelangelo, asked to him to repaint the city and asked to him to paint other the portraits of the twelve apostles. But you see, Michelangelo was a, uh, first a sculptor, he was not a painter. But he had to contend the Pope as there were other companions, like Raphael, like Ferro Ponticelli, etc. So Michelangelo painted the ceiling, but as you will see, he didn't follow the order of the Pope. It means he didn't paint the portrait of the twelve apostles. He painted what he had feeling to paint. And same as we're going to see in detail here, he painted there the Genesis, the history of the creation. <coughs> he painted all this working always alone alone in four years, between 1508 and 1512. Huh? And he painted there the Genesis with nine pictures. We're going to see now one by one. Huh? See, first picture here represents the first day of the creation. And here we can see when on the first day the Lord created the light. Huh? On the second picture, we can see the creation of the sun, the moon, the planets, even the vegetation, the trees, the birds. And in the third picture, we can see when the Lord uh, separated the water and created the earth and the fish. <coughs> the fourth picture, this is the Michelangelo's work of art. I'm sure you saw that many times too. Eh? The creation of the first man, Adam. And look how beautiful. You must admire the anatomy perfection of this body very nicely, lying there and waiting for the life. And this is the right moment that the Lord, you know, after we created the body of Adam, touching his finger, gives him the soul, and that's the beginning of the life. But you know that uh, Adam, poor man, was feeling very lonely, and that's why the Lord thought to give him a company. We can see here then the creation of Eve, you see, from the body of Adam. That's the creation of Eve. And here starts the problems for Adam, you know. <laughs> they were in the Eden, the earth paradise, where everything was very beautiful. But same as written in the Bible, there was also uh, the uh, temptation. Remember the serpent that tempted Adam and Eve. Now, this is funny. According to the mentality of the time, of 400 years ago, at the time, they were always representing temptation with a woman, because they were saying that woman is temptation. And look what Michelangelo did. He painted here the head of the serpent with a woman. See that? That's temptation. <laughs> That's not nice for women, huh? but you know there were no feminists at the time. Huh? So we can see here Adam and Eve attempted eating the apple, and opposite side, of course, they eaten the apple. This made the Lord and changed the side of paradise by an angel. That's Adam and Eve. Three more picture here represents always the Genesis, and here you can see that represented Noah and the universal flood. You can see here Noah and the flood saving his family, the animals in the arch. After the flood, Noah making a sacrifice, thanking God that he saved from the flood. In the last picture, you can see Noah lying in the ground. He's drunk. You see, it was written in the Bible that he was used to drink wine, but often getting drunk. And Michelangelo represented him drunk, lying by, uh, by the side of a chair, wine. And also his three sons, come, same and the outfit, that are also criticized in their father. That's the nice picture. All around, Michelangelo painted here the prophets and sibyls that predicted the coming of the Messiah before the coming of the Lord Jesus. Eh? Prophets and sibyls. Here we can see, for instance, a big painting representing the prophet Jonas by the side of a whale. Remember, some has written the Bible, he was eaten by a whale, etc. So that's the Genesis. Huh? Four years, 1508, 1512. 23 years later, another Pope, the Pope Paul III, asked Michelangelo to paint the wall by the front side of the chapel. And let's see here what he did in detail. He painted here the Judgment Day. And this is a very impressive scene, eh? fantastic. You must notice something very important, the technique of paintings. When 23 years before he painted the Genesis, all the items were separated one next to the other, and chronologically painted one next to the other. Eh? Here, it's all free. You know why? Because Michelangelo painted this during the time of the reform of Martin Luther and the counter reform of the Catholic Church. You know, because of the reform, the Christianity was divided into parts between Protestants and Catholics. And Michelangelo was very sad about that. He had even a mystic crisis. Eh? So, with this terrific scene, he wanted to show here the era of the anger of the Lord against the Christianity and the divided Christianity between Protestants and Catholics. So, this is a very impressive scene. Eh? He painted this uh, only alone in six years. 1535 and 1541. And we can see in the middle of the Judgment Day the Lord Jesus with a symbolic gesture judging dead alive people by his side, his mother, that impressed by this terrific view, turn her face by the side, she doesn't want to see. By the right side of the Lord, the elected people are going to paradise. Paradise is presented here with the symbol of the passion, the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. And by the left side, like a big turbion, you can see the dead people punished and thrown into the eternal punishment, the inference. Here, the influence was painted by Michelangelo, same as written by Dante Alighieri of the Divine Comedy. Eh? Dante Alighieri, one of the greatest poets, you know, Italy, we call the father of the Italian language. Eh? So, as soon as written by Dante Alighieri on the Divine Comedy, he represented here, for instance, in the influence of Charon, with his boat, crossing the Stygian River, and throwing the dead people into the terrible punishment. 
Here, Michelangelo wanted to also to represent the mythological judge of Inferos, Minos, very ugly, with big ears like a donkey and a big serpent surrounding his body, a serpent that is also biting something there, I won't tell you. That's Minos. Here we can see the resurrection on the Judgment Day. See the skeletons coming up to the tomb and, you know, just uh, resurrecting in order to be judged on Judgment Day. And among the elected people here, of course, there are saints, martyrs. Two of the martyrs which seem very well by the side of the Lord are St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence was sacrificed. He was buried alive at the grill. And Michelangelo represented him holding the, uh, the grill, uh, the instrument of torture with the left arm. And by his side, St. Bartholomew, that was sacrificed in a very remarkable way as he has been skinned. And Michelangelo represented him holding a knife with his right hand, instrument of torture, and his own skin. Thank you, by the left hand. That's terrific, huh? Something very important I must show is uh, the face, the skin, which was supposed to be the St. Bartholomew's uh, portrait, right? Well, it is not. It is instead the Michelangelo self-portrait. He painted his own portrait there. He wanted to show his sadness eh, because of the scission of Christianity. Eh? And look at that. And doing that, what he did, he painted, he, he signed also his work. Eh? Artists were never signing their works from the time, but Michelangelo did his own way, and here it is. Here, Michelangelo painted about 300 people, and when he painted all, painted all the, uh, the people there, he painted them all completely naked, one naked, because this is, was the only way to show the soul, how to show the soul, with the naked body. But this was the time of the reform and counter reform. You know that during the country reform, the Catholic Church was getting more and more moralist, more strict, and they were not permitting nudes, much, especially inside the Sistine, the second place, like the Sistine Chapel. Huh? So uh, when Michelangelo finished this painting, and finally the Pope Paul III and all the cardinals, you know, entered, you know, to see the Michelangelo's work, and they saw all the nudes there, Mamma Mia, they were scandalized, eh? and they started to criticize Michelangelo very, very badly, especially the master of ceremonies of the Pope, the name was uh, uh, Biagio da Cesena, in front of the Pope, he criticized Michelangelo, saying that it's not permitted to paint the paint nudes in the second place, license the teach chapel, blah, blah, blah. Michelangelo was offended by the critics, wondering he must be criticized, he represented the human body the same as the Lord created. What's wrong with it? It's Christian mentality. So, because of this uh, uh, critics, he wanted to get a retortion. What he did, a few days later, he came back here to the Sistine Chapel, and when he painted the inference, he painted the portrait of Piaggio da Cesena, the master of Cervo the Pope, that criticized him into the person of Minos. And so he sent it to hell. And what a retortion, even beaten by a I still don't tell you what. <laughs> Later, when Biagio da Cesena, passing by the Sistine Chapel, saw his own portrait there, he was not very happy about that. He immediately went out to the Pope, praying, crying, saying, please, your Highness, ask the Michelangelo to cast my face from there, because I don't want to go to hell. But you know what the Pope answered to him? Say, you know, my son, I am a Pope. Whatever concerns the paradise, I can intervene up to the Godfather. But whatever concerns the hell is not of my competence. I can't <laughs> it's not going to stay there forever. It has a sense of humor. Uh, they didn't make here any retouche, eh? same as they did with the statue. You know what happened uh, during the counter reform? As not a later visiting the gallery, we see all Greek Roman sculptures, 2,000 years old, 2,500 years old, that all the time they didn't have any problem about sex. They were completely naked. During this time, you know what the Catholic Church did? They added the fig leaves, eh? covering their says. So the fig leaves, you see later, another reason they were added later. Huh? So they were not permitted. that. So uh, what they did, uh, they didn't make here any retouches during the life of Michelangelo for respect of this virginity. It's only many years later, after the death of Michelangelo, that insisted with their mentality, they called all the painters to make even their some retouches. Eh? Among them, there was a painter, very famous, the name was Daniele da Volterra, but a, temp, uh, a, a painter that was later called uh, the Pants Maker. You know why? Because they added some pants here, in order to, no, trousers, in order to cover the parts of the body. They were saying was scandal. So the pants you see there are not originally painted by Michelangelo, but added later by Daniele da Volterra with her name. We call for that the pants maker. <laughs> now, do you know that today you're going to see the beautiful, original Michelangelo colors that we couldn't see for many, many, many years? You know, they spent 14 years to clean the chapel, huh? to clean all the paintings, you know. They started first, you know, with the uh, portraits of the popes on the top. Then they spent four years to clean the ceiling of the chapel, and then four more years to clean the Judgment Day. Yeah? The, 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 the Judgment Day. And they finished the cleaning of this uh, two years ago, yeah. uh, by Easter of 1994. Huh? So that's why now you're going to see the beautiful, original Michelangelo colors. I say we couldn't see for many years because of pollution, the smoke of the candle, etc. Now they're clean. But you know what happened during the cleaning here? Some of these pants disappear. <laughs> Not all of them. <laughs> Some of them are, were left 
there purposely because it's also an historical event. Eh? Some others uh, are all without pants. You know, <laughs> Michelangelo painted them. <laughs> so remember what I've been talking about, ladies and gentlemen. We see, first of all, both sides of the chapel, the Old and the New Testament by Perugino, Pinturi, etc. In the ceiling, we see the Michelangelo uh, work of art, the Genesis, the history of creation, and in the front side of the chapel, the Judgment Day. Yeah? That's another Michelangelo fantastic work of art. That's the beautiful painting we we'll see inside the steel chapel. That's a few commentaries I want to tell you about that this beautiful painting, so one's there, you know. But, you know what you're going to see, eh? Well, I hope they were interesting enough. I thank you very much for listening. Please don't forget that. I'm glad you did it that way. Very good. Very good. Very kind. Thank you. Okay, we can start the visit of the museum. Let's go this way. Courtyard of the Vatican Museums. This is a huge uh, complex. You can see the inside. All these buildings are the, uh, the Vatican Museums. Someone says there's over 10 miles of walkway. You can see the dome of St. Peter in the background. And of course, building different periods. Uh, this part of the museum is a very beautiful courtyard called the Corregile Benvedi, which is a very beautiful courtyard. And this was created as some of them are the courtyard in the Vatican uh, Museum. Now this is a uh, beautiful, beautiful ceiling. Absolutely gorgeous.
there. Beer 13, they probably played that by the end of the last century, been pop for about 25 years. And that's why down here we can see the coat of arms of the book, Beer 13, which is a real work of art. This is a kind of mosaic, yeah? made with very, very precious marble stones. Yeah? I mean, Porfida with a, uh, uh, for, for instance, with Porfida green marble, the cypress tree, with white colored marble, the cover star, the fleur de lis, and but the background is entirely made with lapis lazuli stones. Uh, lapis, it's a very precious marble yeah, stones with veins of gold inside. And this is a gift, a present made by the last side of Russia, Nicholas II, to Pope Leo XIII by the end of the last century. With a, a very precious, for a beautiful photograph. So, with a beautiful you see hanging by the left side of the gallery were made in Brussels, Belgium, 400 years ago, 16th century, made by the manufacturer Peter van Alst. But you must know that these tapestries were first drawn on cartoons here in Italy by the Raphael School. And then these tapestries were sent to Brussels in Belgium where they were specialized in the art of tapestries. And as you know, tapestries are not paintings, but they are entirely woven by hand with a silk wool, sometimes even silver and gold. And look at the beautiful, beautiful columns there, 400 years old. Huh? Fantastic work of art. The one down there represents, for instance, the Nativity of the Lord Jesus in Bethlehem. The second one over here, the uh, visit of the wise man in Bethlehem. And going on, we can do it some more. Opposite side, was a very, a very rich prince family, and uh, as a matter of fact, one of the members of the Barberini family was uh, named Pope, and was the Pope of Urban VIII Barberini. And that's why you see also in the four corners of the, the tapestry the Barberini coat of arms, the bees, huh? so this coat of arms of the Barberini family. This gallery is 80 meters long, and now look at the ceiling up here. Well, look attentively because you see, I'm sure that the more you're going to look at it, the more you be convinced that this is a sculpture, a basilica, three dimension, like a cameo. Well, surprise, it's flat. It's only painted. This technique of painting in Italian is called chiaro scuro, which means white and black. It's painted with different nuances of colors, the white and the black by the side of the white, imitating the shadows, and that creates an optical illusion of a relief, a relief that doesn't exist. But you see, it's so perfectly made, I'm sure you're tempted to go up there and touch you with your hand to believe it, huh? That's right there. Uh, big part. The paints uh, of uh, the uh, moving of, uh, uh, the, uh, of uh, this work, even, even the miniature of the flowers all around, you must know that all the time, 400 years ago, in order to woven only a square meter of tapestry, it needed one year of work. You mentioned what it was, it was, it was a whole academy worked to go together and get this fantastic here we have another tapestry. This one is very interesting. Uh, this one represents the supper of Emmaus, uh, the Lord Jesus after death, you know, the big described appearing to the hostels and the supper of Emmaus. What's interesting in this tapestry is this is uh, the prospective technique. What does it mean? Look at the table. The table is looking as coming out from the tapestry, the napkin is moving. Now looking from here, we can see the table turn to the left, right? Now what happens? People are going to walk slowly, slowly, watching this table, we notice that this, this table will start to move and turn on itself. Oh, oh. <laughs> one long lit gallery. view out the window, beautiful sunny day, a part of the Vatican, probably a part of the Vatican radio up on the hill. This is back to this marvelous feeling. It is really impossible to describe. this film as we walk again this beautiful ceiling there, there isn't a lot on the walls uh, but it's the ceiling that really holds the interest
Once again, looking through the, uh, the very large windows of the building outside the Vatican Museum. Beautiful day. Vatican. Every Sunday at 2 hours, you will chop the pop shop in the window of the apartment, which is second window from the right side of the top floor. Huh? Second, the top floor, second from the right side. Every Sunday at 2 hours, but no chop uh, uh, showing up from the window for the icing of uh, the engine, you know, every Sunday at 2 hours. Otherwise, uh, twice a year, Easter, Easter, the pop shop from the balcony, right in the middle of the church, but the special place would be a sort of Easter. If you stay for about an hour, one and a half hour, wishing Merry Christmas, or Happy Easter, 57 last year, and we got three hundred and three. That's the stuff. And then we were going to put the chimney. The pope was not there, huh? It was just uh, in that only for a week. But next to the fireplace inside, we used to go to the papers, and then we said, give me a chimney, and we go to the pope. Just 
Well, we're right in the center of uh, Vatican Square. The second window from the right on the top floor is the Pope's window. Behind those walls is the Sistine Chapel. It's just a very, very large square. This is, would be completely filled at uh, Easter and maybe Christmas. <laughs> This is the street leading from Rome into the uh, Vatican area. Most of this is uh, souvenir shops. Another view. World famous square. 